All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless you all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope that y'all doing all right, staying strong and solid in these times that are in. I pray that you have repented and that you were baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just pray that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, protects you, he looks out for you, he comforts you. I pray that your mental health gets better and that you become more strong and wise in the Lord. I pray that you keep fighting a good fight of faith. You keep running your race. You keep your eyes fixed on the Messiah. You keep your eyes fixed on the prize. You stay on that narrow straight gate path and you help out plenty of people along your journey forevermore. Amen. Always remember that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you and that the Messiah intercedes for you. The spirit intercedes for you. So always stay thankful, grateful, appreciate it. Take it one day at a time. Most definitely. Let us thank the Lord for another day. Let us thank the Lord for giving us another day to seek his face. Let us thank the Lord for food in our belly, clothes on our back and a roof over our head. Let us thank the Lord for protecting us coming in and going out. Guiding us through the morning, getting us through the afternoon, getting us through the evening, getting us through the nights, the week, the weekend. Constantly looking out for us with his grace, mercy, favor, love, the outstretched arm of God, the mighty hand of God, the finger of God. His word has only begun to die for our sins. There's so much things the Lord has done for us throughout our lifetime and continues to keep doing for us because his truth is everlasting. His mercy endures forever. Amen. So always keep him first. Always worship him. Always thank him, praise him, and trust him through every situation you're going through. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. I appreciate all of you for listening and support. It means a lot to me. I love you all. Praying for you all. Let us always uplift each other in Christ and encourage each other in the Lord. Let us always pray for each other, intercede for one another, comfort each other, support each other. All those great, awesome, amazing things. Brothers and sisters of the faith all over the world, let us be together on one accord for the Lord. Amen. Much love to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered all four corners of the earth, all the scattered Israelites among the nations, all ends of the earth. Much love to the churches and mysteries out there with the sound doctrine, the peace, the love, the harmony, the fellowship and the services. Much love to all the previous martyrs, current martyrs and future martyrs, the brave, bold, isolated, courageous believers who are going through it for the gospel, who are being persecuted for the faith, who are going through many tribulations for his namesake. Stay steadfast, firm, strong and diligent. And always stay on point for the most high. Much love to the great tribulation saints down the road. Much love to all the grafted in Gentiles of all nations, tribes, languages, tongues, races, faces, kinjas all over the world. Much love to all the brand new converts out there, all the brand new believers, all the new creatures in Christ. If you just became a believer, God bless you. If you just repented, God bless you. If you just got baptized, God bless you as well. If you didn't repent and get baptized, repent and get baptized ASAP immediately. Amen. Shalom, family, greetings, everyone. Much love to all of you. Welcome, everybody, all peoples, all nations, all tribes, all languages, all tongues, all races, all faces, all kindreds, everybody. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. All the animals, all the creatures, all the beasts, all the fishes in the sea, the birds in the air, the trees, the plants, the mountains. Let all of God's creation praise him. Amen. Whether you are an Israelite or a Gentile, it is all right. Whether you are chosen or adopted, grafted in, it is all right. Let us gather together and praise the Most High. Sing a new song, clap our hands, stomp our feet, praise Him. Rejoice, always rejoice. Make a joyful noise, make a joyful sound, cry to Him, dance, express yourself, play an instrument. Do what you got to do for the Most High. He is always watching us, so always serve Him with gladness and joy, and always worship in spirit and truth. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Love the Lord your God for all your my heart, soul, strength, and might. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Love the Lord your God for your might, heart, soul, strength, and might. Let us love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And let us keep doing Father's business and Father's will for the rest of our lives until the sun comes back. Amen. He has come back like a thief in a, like a thief in the night in a twinkling of an eye. He has come back at an hour nobody knows but the Father. So let's be watchful, alert, sober, vigilant, prayed up. Let's be washed by the water, by the word, the washing of the water through the word. Let's keep our lamp and oils. Let's stand our purpose and call for the most high. Let us know the Lord better. Let's get more close to him. Let's seek his face. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Let's obey the gospel. Let's obey the law, statute, commandments. Let's obey all of God's word. Anything the most has told us personally according to our life, our calling, our purpose, our situation and our gifts, our talents, handle that, people. Take it one day at a time and keep it all together for the Most High. Keep the faith, keep the Word of God, keep the law, statutes, decrees, precepts, ordinances, covenants, promises, keep the testimony of the Messiah, keep the gospel, keep it all together for Him. Amen. And help our people in your environment the best way you can, all right? Now, I hope that you all had a blessed week and a blessed weekend, all right? And better days ahead of you, okay? So today's message, what I love to do is go through Jen DeLeon's church note. And then from there, we will close out with a prayer. We will close out with a priestly blessing. And we will close out giving all the praise, honor, and glory to the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise his only begotten son who died for our sins. Amen. Hallelujah. So here we go. All right. So here we go. The title of this church note is Stay in Your Lane. If you're going to stay in your lane, you're, 
you're going to have to stay focused on your lane. The more you shift your focus on what's happening in another lane, little by little, you start turning the wheel in the direction of where your attention is. We get so busy looking at everyone else's journey that now we don't even believe in the very vision God has given us. Your attention is an investment. What return am I getting in this investment? When you value something, you give it attention, but also your attention gives things value. When you give your attention to negativity, you get a return on that as well. What did I get in return from that attention? I gave you attention for this drama and now I feel less than. I don't know if I trust God anymore. There are some people where if you give them attention, you get a value, but it's not in the place you want it. Your trauma, depression, and insecurity has more value. It became more valuable because I gave attention to something that fed it to something already living inside of me. Starve out the people who feed the things that make me feel insecure because I'm moving into a season in my life where I can't afford to be double-minded. The only time I feel unstable is after I have engaged with you. Some people are on assignment from the enemy and don't even realize it. My assignment is to divide your attention. You won't have momentum to do what God has called you to do. It costs me something to pay attention. There are moments you need to see what's happening, but also have enough wisdom to know when you can't handle it anymore. There are moments you need to see what God is doing for other people because it motivates you, blesses you. But then you need to stop looking at what God is doing at the lives of other people because when you're finished, you come back to your life thinking, God, I don't see you moving at all in my life. The blessings don't just fall to our lives. We serve a God who paid attention to what we needed and gave it to us right when we needed it. God has already gone ahead of you. That means I'm paying attention before you step into the room. He's paying attention right now when you feel lost, forsaken, and confused. God says, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention to everyone who walked away. I'm paying attention to everyone who betrayed you. Because when the time is right and you step into restoration, you'll see I didn't leave you and understood what you needed on the way. I know your life feels random and scattered, but I paid attention to you. God pays attention because he recognizes he's trying to keep you in your lane. Even when we serve out of our lane, even when we swerve out of our lane, he shows up there too. The reason God is so committed to us staying in our lane is because he created this lane for us and there are promises that are only manifest when you stay in your lane. When you stay in your lane, the weapons form but don't prosper. I'm going to stay in this lane because there's promises connected to this lane. I'm going to stay in this lane because there are weapons I see forming and everything in me wants to step out of my lane to get out of target but going to stay in my lane and trust in the Lord. Though he slay me, I shall trust him. The enemy is trying to scare you out of position, and God says the strategy is to stay focused on the lane. If you stay in your lane, despite what comes, I got you. While you're in your lane, I can't back up no foolishness. You have to get back in your lane. Somebody has been wanting to feel, somebody has been waiting to feel when I am going to feel the strength of the new year, the momentum. I'm used to feeling a certain thing, and it hasn't turned the corner yet because it's supposed to feel like that because your lane is getting narrow. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 6 through 12, continuing. There's not enough room in this lane for your pride, ego, or your associates, your comfort zone. You will know you're beginning to talk yourself out of the lane that God has created for you when you become more practical than you do miraculously. It started in the spirit. Somebody in here has shrunk their dream and the vision God gave them to make it more practical than miraculous because it got so hard that you don't think the lane can be this narrow and survive. So I'll make it practical. Maybe I don't want that. I don't want what God wants for me. Maybe I want what I can do on my own strength. Sometimes God will use your enemies to uphold your blessing. I'm going to keep them in the promised land for you to get strong enough to overtake their position. You're worried because you see someone occupying the space. If everybody can get in, then we aren't able to qualify the work ethic required to maintain the land. You need some people to fall off. You need to know when the land gets narrow. You need to know who really has what it takes. You need people to see it the way God looks at it. I know you see the numbers, but do you see the glory? I know you see the aglathrim, but do you see glory? They had to go because they couldn't count in glory. They couldn't see the presence. They knew man, but don't see the spirit realm. They would have cursed you. They would have tried to pra be practical when God has called you to be supernatural. God has called you to the supernatural. I know you're going to miss them, but the lane is getting narrow. I know you're going to miss them, but this is the cost. All you got to do is stay in your lane. This lane feels like a tight rope, but I'm going to stay in it. This lane feels like it's going to take me out, but I'm going to stay in it. The enemy has been trying to get me to get out of my lane, and I'm almost got convinced that it would be better if I moved out of the way and let someone else do it. But you need to get back on the tight rope because the promise is better than the pain. The promise is better than the hurt. God, you brought me too far for me to go back crying. God, I just want you to please, I want you to be pleased with me. Less is more because at least I know those who are with us are really with us. Amen.
All praise to the Most High God of heaven and earth. He is the God of Shem, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob.